Greetings, humanoids of the internet. My name is Bob, and this is episode 14 of Journey into Space. Uh, now we have a ton of things to do uh, in this episode. Maybe for uh, enough for a couple, a few episodes. I'm not sure. Um, what we're going to try to do is uh, get our guys from Duna uh, and bring them back to Kerbin. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to have to uh, launch the guy on Ike into orbit. I'm going to have to do uh, send the guys, the three guys on uh, Duna, on a suborbital trajectory uh, to meet up with uh, uh, with Shelly Kerman, uh, also on Duna, uh, so that I can pick them up at the same time. Uh, and I've got to send two ships. Uh, one will be a lander just to pick up uh, the guys on Duna. Um, and the other other one will be the interplanetary uh, ship that'll be just stay in orbit and uh, rendezvous with the uh, lander that I'm sending down uh, and uh, send those guys back to Kerbin. Uh, so we've got at least en enough for, I would say, probably a couple episodes here. Um, and I'm going to try to to uh, only include the exciting stuff and leave out a lot of the boring uh, interplanetary stuff because we're going to have... Um, uh, Two rockets that are going to, to Duna, uh, and uh, so there's going to be a lot of. If I included every detail of, of the journey of each of those rockets, it would just be too much. Uh, so I'm going to sort of focus on the highlights, um, and uh, and uh, this, so we got we got enough for probably two episodes at least here. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, there are two different kinds of rockets involved in this uh, uh, project. This is the uh, Planet Explorer 8 lander. This is going to land on Duna, uh, pick up the three astronauts from the uh, first Duna mission, and also uh, Shelley from the uh, uh, Polar and the Canyons expedition, uh, and uh, take them back into orbit. And then, then once he get, gets back into orbit, its job is done. Um, and that, that is the Planet Explorer 8 lander. And... The uh, Planet Explorer 8 bus. The Planet Explorer 8 bus is uh, purely for picking these guys up, back up at, in uh, orbit. Uh, and don't lock up. Damn you. Damn you. It's <laughs> purely for picking these guys up in orbit and taking them back to Kerbin. Um, the difference uh, between the two is this actually has a decoupler here. So that this part, which is, um, uh, is called the crew tank. Um, I'll find you the the uh, more exact name of it uh, here in a second. Uh, the crew tank it, it can hold up to five Kerbal knots. Um, uh, it has a decouple here so that, that this part can uh, deorbit and uh, and land uh, with using parachutes on Kerbin. Um, and but it, it won't land anywhere on Duna. Uh, it's just purely a uh, interplanetary ship. Uh, so that's uh, this one has the coupler here, and the um, uh, Planet Explorer Eight lander. Uh, okay, you see, it doesn't actually have a decoupler here. Uh, the parachutes here are purely for um, helping it land on Duna, and hopefully, we'll be able to save a little gas. Uh, for the return trip uh, by uh, using some parachutes, uh, which we may may involve some uh, rather uh, hairy maneuvers, depending on how much gas we want to shit and save. Uh, we may uh, try um, uh, coming in fairly hot and hoping the parachutes can uh, can stop us because um, uh, because I don't have a this is a big old heavy ship and I don't have an infinite number of gas for lifting lifting off of uh, of Duna with. This is my gas tank that will serve to take us off of uh, Duna. Uh, and uh, so every drop we can save out of that tank uh, would be a good thing. Um, so uh, I will. Um, uh, I don't. I, it's going to be so laggy that I don't think I can even show you the launch. Uh, I'll just. Um, I will just pick up uh, when we're ready to do something exciting instead of doing something boring. <laughs> okay, the Planet Explorer la Eight lander uh, has a uh, Rodkin, Ganester, and uh, Bartbin on it. Uh, I'll probably try to show you the, uh, the launch, but then I'll have to stop recording because I'm sure it's just going to be a lag festival. And it's a lag festival already. Do 
Yeah, I'm getting like one frame a second, so actually I'll stop recording now. Okay, the Planet Explorer 8 lander is in orbit. It's a messed up orbit, uh, but uh, considering that um, uh, how much lag I had uh, lifting off, it's a miracle I made it to orbit at all. Um, but, so we're in, in orbit, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, let it stay in orbit for a minute. We'll launch the uh, second part, which is the Planet Explorer 8 bus, uh, which is the um, uh, the purely interplanetary part of it. Uh, and uh, so that's that. Okay, well that launch was, if possible, even more of a cluster frack than the last one. Uh, so, but I've got the um, uh, the lander rocket and the uh, interplanetary bus rocket both in orbit now. Uh, I did discover there was a slight flaw in my reasoning, um, which is that the interplanetary bus rocket has enough uh, space to take the um, uh, astronauts on Duna back home, uh, but it doesn't have enough space take the the astronauts on the lander back home. So we're going to have three astronauts that are going to be uh, hanging out in orbit for a while around Duba, Duna until I can get another one of these buses, uh, these um, uh, bus rockets out uh, to pick them up. So um, so there was a slight flaw in my thought processes, but uh, we will be able to get the uh, crew of the um, bus uh, rocket and the crew uh, of the various Duna expeditions uh, back uh, home safe. So. Uh, that is a plus. And then we'll send out another rocket to pick up the, the guys from the lander. <laughs> okay, I've already gotten the uh, uh, Planet Explorer uh, 8 uh, lander on an escape tra trajectory here. Uh, and about to have the uh, uh, Planet Explorer 8 bus uh, follow them up behind uh, very shortly. Uh, and uh, everything looks to be uh, going pretty nominally. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, there's There'll be some la some time before I have to do the the um, the the final adjustments for this one before I have to do one for this one, but it'll be pretty close. So they'll be arriving at Duna uh, pretty uh, pretty tight together. So uh, I don't know how that's going to work out exactly, uh, but uh, we shall see. Okay, I decided to go ahead and uh, give uh, the uh, bus um, uh, a couple more orbits of uh, Kerbin before I send it off. So. I I have some uh, slack between I do the time I do the air braking maneuver for the lander and the time I do the uh, uh, braking maneuver for the um, the bus. So, but I'm about to come up on that um, the Kerbin uh, Kerbin uh, burn to uh, escape Kerbin's gravity here pretty shortly. Okay, the booster stage for the bus is out of fuel. I had uh, for whatever reason I had a little bit less fuel in orbit. Uh, uh, for the um, bus than I did for the lander, which is okay because the bus doesn't have to actually land anywhere. It just has to go, get to um, Duna's orbit and come back. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the separation. I guess I didn't have any separatrons on this one, uh, which is probably a good thing because it might might blow back on the engines here. Let's give it a little squirt out of the nuclear engines just to separate. Okay. Alrighty, and uh, here's our two craft. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Planet Explorer 8 lander. Okay, it's pretty bad when you're lagging out and you're in deep space. You know, you're not you're not lifting off anymore. You're not trying to get into orbit anymore. You're in deep space. So, uh, even though we still have fuel in the um, booster part of the, the lander, uh, we're going to go ahead and drop it in, in the hopes that it will help us with our lag situation. Probably won't help much, but right now I'll take what I can get. Uh, crap.
I don't know whether it's so bad because these spacecraft are still relatively pretty uh, close together. If that may be contributing to the lag, uh, but they're they're close together, meaning you know hundreds of thousands of, of uh, kilometers probably apart. Uh, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, I just know that uh, if it's lagging this bad, when I'm having to do uh, fiddly maneuvers to get uh, in air braked into uh, Duna's uh, orbit, it's going to be kind of uncool. So I'm hoping the lag situation sorts itself out here pretty quick. Yeah, like right here, I really need to have fine control over what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm may not be may not be getting that. We'll see. Fire! 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 Nuclear fire! This is the uh, uh, Planet Explorer bus, which uh, is having less lag issues than the uh, the other one. Uh, so um, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this one on a rendezvous. I may have to restart uh, the game to get the other one to, to behave right. We'll see. Okay, I um, screwed up the encounter. I uh, jumped the gun and um, uh, left Kerbin too early. Uh, so I loaded a quick save that had um, uh, the bus, the interplanetary bus part of it still in orbit, but the, the uh, lander had already... Uh, left for Aduna, uh, so I had to relaunch the lander. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to um, make sure that our, my alignment is right this time, and then we'll head back out. Okay, this problem is, the program has been giving me no end of troubles. Uh, crashed several times, uh, refused to give me a uh, encounter with uh, Aduna one time, because even though I, I know that uh, it should have been possible, but it, it simply wouldn't recognize that the, the encounter exists. Uh, so I'm going to give it one more shot, and uh, if it doesn't work, I'm going to take a break for the rest of the night and go do something else, because <laughs> this is this is frustrating. Uh, okay, well I'll I will um, I will uh, uh, let you know uh, if and or when something happens. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh. Okay, my rockets have apparently broken the game. Uh, I've locked up the last two, two times I tried to do something with, with uh, one of my rockets. I'm, the other ones I left in orbit. I'm not even trying to, to move it. Uh, but I uh, locked up the last two times. So I'm going to give it one more shot. One more shot. And then if, if it still locks up, this is going to be a real short video. <laughs> All right. Uh, if, if, if this doesn't work, I may have to put the uh, rescue mission on hold and go to BOP instead. Okay, I've just achieved one of the most retarded planetary encounters of my entire life. Why it wouldn't give me a counter first time around, I don't know. Uh, but I will take what I can get. Uh, let's see what the fuel is like here. Uh, still got enough fuel to get home, probably. Uh, so, looks like the retirement bus will get to Duna a little bit later than intended. Uh, next, we got to see if we can get the lander to do the same thing uh, with any luck. Why, why it didn't give me an encounter the first time around, I don't know, except for maybe the lag was so severe it just couldn't think, think that well. Uh, okay, well, we'll see what we can get here. Okay, looks like the uh, lander will actually get to Duna about six months before uh, the uh, bus does. Uh, why it didn't give me an encounter for the bus, I don't know. It's the mysteries of a fracked up KSP build, uh, is all I can think. Uh, Okay, so I will um, I will restart things when we're ready to do some air breaking. Okay, we got our first Duna set, uh, encounter set up. I'm uh, uh, down to under two million miles on the encounter uh, from periapsis, uh, and so we will see how it goes. Okay, we're going to come in and do our um, air breaking at Duna, pretty darn close to the surface, uh, eleven thousand six hundred meters. Uh, I don't see any kind of big gigantic mountain peaks in the way, as far as I know. Um, but that's kind of pretty close. But uh, 15,000 meters last time didn't really cut it, so um, we're kind of uh, closer this time. 15,000 meters the last time was not enough to uh, break us all the way to orbit. And that's a pretty picture. Okay, last minute adjustments. 
I'm still coming in pointed uh, retrograde in the thought that uh, I might um, I still need to do braking. I think that's probably not likely, uh, but uh, we'll see. If I wind up having to turn prograde uh, in a hurry, it's going to be difficult because this thing doesn't go any, doesn't move in any direction in a hurry. But I do have some RCS left, not much. And here we come. Oh, and we're doing it over the darkness. That's good. That way we won't see. <laughs> we won't see if something's about to hit us. That's good. Are you happy, campers? Happy? Happy you're sliding into the atmosphere at 2,000 meters a second? Yes, I'm sure you are. You're all professional astronauts, right? You all get the whole thing of you might not come back, right? <laughs> okay, we're slamming in. And it's getting getting red quick. That's, that's kind of a pretty picture, too. I like my screenshots. Okay, let's take a look at the map. Now we're still a long ways from periapsis, so. And the, the the altimeter is just going nuts. It doesn't know what altitude we are. Well, we're not moving all that fast, as far as bringing down the the uh, periapsis. Bringing, bringing us into orbit. Yeah, the altimeter, the altimeter has no idea of anything. Alright, now it's starting to cook. Now it's cooking. There's a laser beam going across there, yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. And it's still real laggy. Hey, talk to me. Are we going to make orbit? Looks like we might. Okay, we're up to 14,000 now. Well, I can counter. Okay, I'm at twenty thousand. Still not breaking as much as I would like.
still having to spend a lot of fuel. Not as much as if I did an air brake at all, but still spend a lot of fuel. I get up to the uh, apoapsis and uh, and bring up my periapsis a bit and go from there. Okay, uh, this lander lags like hell on a stick, uh, so I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, also, it's still got quite a lot of fuel, so I might uh, be daring and uh, and try to land it with the fuel intact, which probably. It's not a real good thing as far as the health of the astronauts. Uh, but uh, if I can do that and land with the big big top tank intact, I can just take these guys straight back to uh, Kerbin uh, and um, not worry about uh, the, the, um, the bus, the magic bus. Uh, but uh, that's uh, sort of, that's, that's, that's beyond the design specifications, <laughs> put it that way. So we'll see how that goes. Also, if I go in with the top tanks, uh, I won't be able to use the parachutes. Um, I'll have to go in totally with propulsive bracing, braking. Uh, so that's another thing. But I've got a quick save. I'm going to go ahead and try it the hard way, see if that works. If not, I've got a quick save. So We'll do it the, 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 the way, we, way I designed it to, to happen. Which is I go in, I drop all the the, uh, the external tanks uh, at least right before I land, uh, right before I need the parachutes, uh, and uh, and do it like that. If this fails, if this doesn't fail, I'll just take these guys home. There's actually also a second part of this, which is these guys here. They're going to have to do a suborbital flight to get over to where uh, the Graf Wishbone is because uh, Graf Wishbone can't move right now, and they can. Uh, so. Uh, once I get this guy down, hopefully near the graph wishbone, uh, I will um, go switch over to, the, to these guys and do a suborbital flight, uh, which could be full of full of danger, full of danger and death. Okay, I already know this is going to be hairy as night kinds of hell. For one thing, I can't looking at the outside view is absolutely useless. I can't see altitude or anything. Uh, the lag is so bad. Um, so I'm using the map view for right now. Uh, I'm probably not going to try to land with the with the top tank on. Uh, probably going to jettison it right before, shortly before I hit the ground, <laughs> or uh, shortly before I land, ideally, <laughs> not hit the ground. Um, but I'm on a good trajectory. I, I already had one fail um, failed attempt. Um, this one's working out a little little bit better. Uh, so we shall see. Still pretty high up. Still uh, forty-three thousand meters. So but uh, you know, if I have to do any kind of last-minute maneuvering, it's just hopeless. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, drop the uh, the top tank. This thing right before I get to the ground uh, because uh, uh, that way I can use my parachutes. And so parachutes are fairly idiot proof. Uh, I think it probably will work even if uh, I'm, the thing is damn near uncontrollable. Uh, and I've got a lot of parachutes on it. Uh, so I'm hopeful of that working. <laughs> Right now, I'm just kind of kind of burning uh, to keep my my velocity down. 
Uh, that's what got me last time is I let my velocity get too high for me to uh, to stop it. So. And there is um, uh, Shelly Kerman in the graph wishbone too, uh, not that far away. If need be, I could probably do a hop over, but uh, she may be actually be able to walk over or jet back, jet back and walk over, which I would prefer because I, I, this thing is not the easiest thing to fly. Maybe it'll be a little easier once I drop this uh, top tank. It's actually already a bit easier than it was. I was getting like four, uh, you know, four frames a second at best, and it's still kind of acting. Well, no, this looks okay. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna do it do it in map view for as long as I can because uh, trying to steer it from the outside is just not happening. I'll I'll do a terminal steer uh, near the ground. Uh, but uh, and I also have to get out of the way of this tank somehow. I don't want this tank to come splat that back down on me. But I want to keep this tank tank intact because I'm gonna need that to get off the off of uh, Duna, get into orbit. So that the, the interplanetary bus could pick me up. Okay, I'm at uh, 29,000. Holding steady at about 120 meters a second. Why is my uh, why am I widening widening my uh, vertical uh, my uh, horizontal velocity? That sucks. It's not what I want. Oh, I'm going up. No, I'm not. Well, that's retrograde. Thirteen thousand. Let's kill it off a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use those parachutes because I'm probably gonna need that to uh, kill off some of my horizontal velocity too. Just trying to steer this thing in anything other than map view is just just not working too well. I'll get down to about 5,000 meters, um, kill all my vertical velocity, pop the top tank, and uh, then shortly after they're, they're get hit the parachutes.
No, I'm going back up again. Damn it. Okay, five thousand meters. We're gonna we're gonna pop back up, drop the tank, and uh, pop the parachutes. Take a look out the window here. And I know this is well below 5,000 meters, so I should be safe. Yeah, it's freaking out. thousand meters. Let's pop up. Oh, pop up some more. Get us in that. Thank you very much. Oh, I hope that's not going to come slamming into me. That would suck. Alright, let's pop the parachute. So I'm going to be freaked out. <laughs> oh man. Holy moly. Oh, I should have predicted that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, hopefully my parachute saved me. <laughs> I still got most of my engines. We can still save the mission. <laughs> uh. Oh, come on.
well, they survived. See, they're all smiling. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Okay, well, I've got to figure out a way to get that um, get that tank out of my way when I get rid of it. So we will uh, try it again. Okay, I'm coming in. Come in a little hotter than I would because I got parachutes and uh, uh, I don't want to just waste any gas. I'll go ahead and let the speed climb up a little bit. Try not to get it too far above uh, 20 meters a second. So. I don't want to go too slow either because uh, these parachutes may detach if, if I actually stop. Like they just did there. That's okay. Okay, something broke off. Got up, it wasn't one of my engines. That would suck. Well, I heard something pop, but I don't know what that was. I surely hope it was not an engine. Because I pretty much just set it right down on the engines here. These landing legs were, were only good for stabilization. They weren't really, weren't really uh, doing much. Oh, fuck. Pardon my language. Yeah, that engine broke off. So getting back up again might be a challenge. Let me try something. Yep, that engine broke off. Damn it. Okay. That engine is opposite to this engine. I can't turn it off though. Hmm. Do I want to try to load a quick save or uh, just fly with it? I'm going to try to just fly with it.
Okay, well, it looks like the um, uh, Planet Explorer 8 has a rather critical design flaw. Uh, its la landing legs are not low enough <laughs> to keep the uh, nuclear engines to, uh, from breaking off. Uh, in fact, two of them did break off. I tried to, uh, went ahead and tried to uh, see how I could lift off again, and I couldn't because uh, two of the engines had broken off. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, next time, uh, I'm going to um, uh, send out a, a redesigned uh, uh, lander uh, and try this again. <laughs> uh, everything actually worked okay once I once I learned to to, to aim this away from me. Uh, everything else worked out okay uh, except for the monumental lag uh, and the uh, fact that the uh, landing legs aren't 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 long enough. <laughs> they don't reach the ground. <laughs> uh, so um, that's all. That's all for right now. Um, next time I will launch a new lander. Uh, actually, I'll probably will uh, go ahead and bring the uh, the the bus um, uh, in uh, into uh, orbit first. Uh, then I'll send out a new lander, uh, and then uh, we shall try it all again. <laughs> Oh Lord have mercy. Uh... Okay, that's all for now. <laughs> oh man. Holy moly. Oh, I should have picked you that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well hopefully my parachute saved me.